Hey guys, what's happening? So, this is a video for you guys with the Ford F-250. So, I had an issue, my alternator went out, stopped charging, and I'd recently replaced it about 10,000 miles ago. Uh, good thing I bought the lifetime warranty one. Um, I was getting ready to put it back on, and I decided to look at these wires. Uh, I could basically barely see that thing opened up like that. Um, so yeah, these things were grounding out, man. That This thing would also prevent it from charging, so I don't know if the other alternator was even bad or not. To tell you the truth, but yeah, take a look at that. So if you're having a charging issue, make sure you check these wires that go to the feed right here. I'm gonna pop them off, probably put some shrink wrap on there. But uh, another thing to look at if you're having alternator charging problems. All right, for the background on this, doing a print. All right, so, so what I have here is some, um, I, I bought this and I showed this on our video, but uh, these are like, are like the universal keys that get like removed like every single connector. So I want to remove the connector so I can actually put some shrink wrap over that wire because I don't want to cut and splice and have to solder. So if I can get them out and pull them out and get some shrink wrap on them, that's ideal. So I'm not sure you can see that, but I got to take out that little plastic retainer and having those two things in there kind of lifts up the back where it locks in. So hopefully I can get that on there pulled out. All right, so there's another little tab in there. I don't know if you can see it. Turn my flashlight. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but there's another tab in there. You gotta you gotta release and pulls out the back like that. All right, so I trace this wire all the way back down. I just put this on to protect it. It's actually a hot. It's a hot 12 volt right here. So um, the one that's all see it's all melted. So it must have grounded out on something. Not sure what's up because the cover is melted all the way down. So I took it down all as far as I could. I mean, I don't know how much more melting. I might bring it all the way down. But um, yeah, it's definitely not good. So, all right. All right, so uh, the first layer. And then I'm gonna come back with another layer to keep them tight together. I probably might try to get them wrapped around there. Let's see. All right, there you are. Electrical tape, then I shrink wrap it all the way up. Multiple layers. Get that plug back on. All right, got the connector connected to the alternator. Put the alternator back. All right, so if you're wondering if you have a truck like this and the alternator looks a little bit different, this is actually a large case upgrade. So this actual alternator should be able to put out more amps. It's the larger case, and it's basically a direct swap. I did in our video about it, but I also ground out my alternator directly to my battery. So there's actually there's a spot in the back of the alternator for a, a ground strap. Helps with the radio suppression. Yeah, and the more grounds, the better. All right, so yeah, it was a headache getting the, the belt off on these things. You have to get like a, a half inch drive socket in there. I have an extension on there to get into there. I thought I didn't start filming as soon as I took the all data off, but I totally forgot. But if you're gonna have a Power Stroke six liter, uh, I mean, I would probably buy an alternator at a local auto parts store and make sure you get a lifetime warranty one because Power Stroke six liters are super hard on alternators. Uh, you'll go through a lot of those things. So one of the reasons why is because you have a dual battery and it needs to charge two batteries. Also, when you when I start this up the first time, um, it doesn't even start actually, you turn the, it won't even turn the alternator on for at least two minutes. So you'll notice that I have a voltmeter on here and it won't even kick in the alternator after two minutes. And I do that so you don't overload the alternator uh, because the glow plugs, they draw so much energy. So get this thing going and you have to wait two minutes before the alternator even kicks in see that's why you need to have good batteries in one of these trucks all right good the battery light went out so that was the issue i had before my battery light was on so as my uh, gt tuner gauge comes up here's my volts so right now my volts are kind of low so right now it's basically running the whole engine on battery and it's going to take about two minutes so maybe I'll speed up the video while we're waiting here. But you know you have a working alternator when this thing kicks up to, it needs to kick up to at least 13.6. So typically it's anywhere from about 13.6 to 14.3 or 14.4. That's what I've seen for alternators. So like I said, I have to sit here and wait. go see that right there there we go got a good alternator 14 volts 13 8 to 13 14 so 
if you have a voltmeter in your car and you're not doing at least 13.6, then you have a bad alternator. So, all right, back in business again. So yeah, I don't know why that thing, that wire was uh, all melted, so it must have grounded out or did something. Um, like the, 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 the wire must have been overheated. Or you typically, if it's, a, if it's a positive wire, it probably got grounded out and shorted out and overheated, so. So if you're out, you have this truck and you're having the same issues, hopefully this video helps you. Um, all right guys, cool.